You can choose to view an outline of the entry, which gives only a small portion of the etymology and form section, and presents each definition without any of the quotations. The quotations can be included in this view by selecting Show All. Clicking Full Entry gives the most detailed view, including full forms list and etymology, as well as all the quotations. Each OED entry has a headword and a part of speech which are at the top of the entry. For all non-obsolete words, British and American pronunciations are given in written form. Some entries will also have a regional pronunciation if that is relevant. For the majority of these words, you can also hear the word spoken by clicking the blue button with the white arrow. Entries which have at least one regional sense also have an audio pronunciation read by a speaker from that part of the world. The forms list shows different spellings of the headword throughout its use in English, as well as the time periods such spellings were in use. The frequency band gives an indication of the frequency of the word in current English. If you click on the dots, a pop-up window appears, giving you more detailed information. All entries contain information on where the word comes from. This is presented at first as a concise summary. A more detailed origin, when known, follows in the etymology proper. The OED is a historical dictionary, which means that it presents meanings of words in chronological order. This means that the earliest definition may not be the most common in use today, or it may even be obsolete. Definitions will include any appropriate labeling to help the reader understand more about the word, including in which region or subject area it might be used. Each definition is followed by a selection of quotations from published sources, illustrating the word in use. The headword is underlined. Editors aim to find the earliest example of each sense in English and a range of examples throughout the period in which that meaning is used. After the simple senses, we have examples of the headword used as part of phrases. These are also presented in chronological order with supporting quotational evidence. In noun entries, if there are examples of the word used in compounds, this is presented next. The transparent compounds, where the meaning should be easily discernible from the meanings of the two parts, come first. These are followed by compounds which require definitions. Again, all are supported with quotations. Finally, come any derivatives that the word may have.